folks welcome back to the channel we got whisk boy and wait you hear what he's got to say today so far away from reality You took a sacred oath to protect his freedom of speech. He can yell, he can swear, he can say whatever he wants. He doesn't know what he's talking. Did you ever have a bad tick that you just couldn't get rid of? Just for that, and you telling him not to yell while you escort a fancy pants to their car is the epitome of hypocrisy. You just uh, you just uh, escorted somebody in a fancy suit to their car, these guys, but you're yelling at somebody for engaging in free speech. What's wrong with that? Because they're not personal security for somebody. You guys work you guys work to uphold our rights. You have a cell phone and a computer. You're you're harboring them yourself if it if that's the way it is you're a jerk you're an idiot an asshole all in one score and you yell at other citizens for expressing the first amendment i just don't want him shouting because there's Why a not? somber event going that's on. that's fine but it's even if even if it's not one at a time, even sorry. if it's not if even if it's not in good taste it's his it's his right i'm sorry i don't know who to listen to uh it's his right to it's even if you don't like it the first amendment was that's not what the third amendment was meant to do completely fraudulent that controversial speech back in the day you guys like to talk about policies well just to let you know uh no policy can be written that is below the law it's got to be equal to or above the law rhetoric where rhetoric is using words in a clever way to persuade others to accept an idea rhetoric is the use of words that include half truths and untruths to purposely cause an emotional negative reaction, emphasize differences to an extreme, create bias, bigotry, and unrest, where your First Amendment ends and your disorderly conduct begins is right here. Disorderly conduct is a crime that involves activity or behavior that is offensive or disruptive and interrupts the other people's ability to enjoy that same space. So whatever you're doing, if you're doing something that's wrong and other people can't enjoy the same space, then you're in disorderly conduct and you know you've done that many times. I'm quartering. Well, I mean, they're quartered in your house as a digital soldier. It's unconstitutional, right? They're in your- You can't come up, come up with anything better than cyber soldiers? Is that what you're going with? Your laptops. That's unconstitutional. It's the NSA itself is inherently unconstitutional. And then Edward Snowden came out, what, 10 years ago and said they're spying on Americans. They got more money. See, I thought the quartering was more about giving them shelter. That's TV. true. But this is a digital soldier that's in your house. This is updated. You have a digital soldier that's watching. You, they Maybe can go into make another amendment. Well, we should. I think that's more of a Fourth Amendment issue, isn't it? It is also. It's also a violation of our Fourth Amendment. Yes, it's also a violation of your Fifth Amendment too, because it's you're not incriminating yourself when the NSA. You are incriminating yourself when the NSA can wirelessly, warrantlessly search all your stuff. But I appreciate you being. I don't think that's a. I think Fifth Amendment is the right to remain silent. It is, and how can you remain? How can you remain silent when you have a trillion dollar government entity inside? of your phone, inside of your laptop. Oh, so there. not you, right? You clicked all the boxes when you set up your phone, didn't you? Yeah, that's you accepted true. all the- And you- This guy's a crockpot. I wonder if he actually reads back. And you, and when you swore no to the Constitution, you just said, "Hey, yeah, I trust this," but you didn't read the Third Amendment either. Just like uh, I didn't. That doesn't mean I didn't read it. No, I can't recite it. That's well, you should be able. I mean, it's ten. Fair to me. I'm being I, fair to I, me. I, I am being fair to you because I, you were you humble. You said I never read the Third Amendment. Well, I swore my I swore no to the Constitution, and that's just wrong. Well, as a police officer, and it's your job, the literature, to uphold our Bill of Rights. You should know the yeah. ten Bill of Rights off the top of your head. Yeah. That, that, that's a high bar. You have an app on your phone just like I have an app on my phone. You download the Constitution, okay? And also, for context... I have a pocket Constitution. Even it's better. Not in my pocket right now. Okay, so that's where I it should be. So next time, even if you don't know the Third Amendment, I never suggest pulling it out. But in this case, you can pull it out. How are we going to procreate, man? What's your name and badge number? 
I'm Paul Fredrickson, number 1210. Thank you for being humble and, and able to de-escalate that. Yes, but please, please don't go against people. Anybody, anything that anybody wants to say, we have the right to swear, we have the right to yell, we have the right to peaceably assemble. That's disorderly. I don't like it. Sir, specifically, when does the First Amendment end and disorderly conduct begin? There's no answer. I've asked dozens of cops. There is no answer. Because as long as I'm not destroying anybody's property or calling for violence, I have the right to say whatever I want. I, I have the right to say F you. I didn't preemptively come up and say F you to you, but that's my right. It, it's, it's literally there so we can say bad shit about the government. Because before you couldn't talk shit about King George. But now we get to talk shit about Pratter, about Fredrickson. And that's, and that's what makes this country a good place. Because if you guys are above the law, and that's what's happening now. This is a private event. Right? It should be out there for the public. This is a private event where you guys protect the governor who works for us. And now that we can't even access the governor. He, and, and maybe if he's going to take questions, it's going to be I from... that's overstated. No, I, I would, so dis you can't I would disagree governor. with you because I've literally went Maybe to... you can't access the governor on your whim. Well, you I, would I would disagree with you. And uh, you can go back and look through my channel, right? I've confronted... Uh, we've confronted Ooh. Trump, Biden, this Hillary. Is you're going wrong is everything's a confrontation first. Well, no, that's, I'm explaining to you why, right? I've traveled this country. I, I've sent countless emails, phone numbers, and when I go to a place, I'll call and try to speak to the mayor or the governor. They're always not there. Then we pop into their office. Oh, uh, he, is he here? I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, you don't know the schedule? That's pretty weird, aren't you, uh, his assistant? They and they know never they know, and they're never there. I've, I've literally went to hundreds of city halls in almost every state capital, and not once ever has a governor or a mayor ever followed up well actually one time in kansas a very small town ever followed up to me and said yes i would actually like to meet you via phone email or in person so we have to unfortunately confront these people on this question but what happens later is we foyer their emails and what happens they're more than happy to meet with corporate donors you want to go out and cut a ribbon or you want to go atv riding with somebody they got plenty of time for that but for the average joe they have no time for us and that's, the, and that's why we have to go over there. Look, you guys got how many people here? One, two, three, four, all protecting the governor. Uh, I, I don't think we're here just for the What are you here for? What was your assignment today? I want the hallowed ground, the reverent event to go off without a disruption. But that wasn't your assignment. And, and a disruption would be the First Amendment, which, you're, which you took an oath to protect. So a disruption... I mean, we could stay out here and everything. I mean, we could literally say F you to all those people. We would never do that. Awful. It is awful, but it's our right to do so. So it, it's, you're, you're supposed to protect disturbances. You're, you're supposed to protect the protest. I mean, if the, if the KKK walked over here, you have to protect the KKK. Black Lives Matter, anybody. That's their freedom of speech. And, and, and that's what you have to do. You have to protect our freedom of, of speech, everybody's. Because if you selectively enforce the law, that's the same thing with disorderly conduct. When you're subjective or it's up to an officer's objectivity... That's the definition of fascism, when you can apply the law selectively. So we were living in a fascist country where if you don't like the message, people get arrested. Meanwhile, fancy pants get, a, get an escort to their car. And that's what's the problem with this country. Do you want to escort to your car? No. I got enough escorts on Backpage and Craigslist. I'm pimping them out here. Which is illegal, too, because sex work is consensual. And, and this is the type of thing, too. So officers take uh, an oath. It's not just the First Amendment. How many times have, have these guys here arrested somebody for a weapon? But it says shall not be infringed, right? Arrested people with weapons. And that, and, and that, so you've dishonored your oath respectfully, sir, because the Second Amendment says shall not be infringed. And the, the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution, as well as Marbury versus Madison in 1803, says all laws that are repugnant to the Constitution are therefore null and void. And then you got the drug war, the illegal drug war. With alcohol prohibition, you had to get a constitutional amendment. You guys didn't get that. You just got marching orders from Richard Nixon in the United Nations and started arresting people for victimless crimes. And that's the problem because you guys don't. You oh, maybe you sorry, might. I, I trailed off there for a second. No, so that's the thing. Like, I try to keep up. With you. You're arresting Go people. Ahead. You're you're threatening to arrest people for disorderly conduct, or in peaceably assembling. That's a violation of the First Amendment, which you took a sacred oath to. You've arrested people for weapons. Hold on. You've arrested people for weapons, which is a violation of the Second Amendment, which you took an oath to, right? Officers are, are, the drug war, which I told you, is already illegal. Then officers, you guys are supposed to protect the Fourth Amendment, right? But every time you show up at a scene, you guys have an ID? Do you mind if I, do you mind if I search around over there? You're trained, literally trained to violate our Fourth Amendment.
So you guys take a note to something. I appreciate you for reading it. Half these guys don't even read it. And then you got all these that's guys. Claim. I don't think that's right. I, 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 let me tell you, I've literally dealt with thousands of police. I, I, there's, I, I, there's nobody in this country that's dealt with more police officers than me. I, I'm in the yeah, top five percent top. Uh, top five percentile across this whole country and these people don't know I, I've, I've just the last th week I, I've, I've asked dozens of cops they don't know and the thing is how many unsolved murder cases are there here how many un untested rape kits are here in Oklahoma City a bunch that was a big deal yeah yeah it's a big deal here but instead of instead of Kyle working on something or maybe you know maybe Kyle He's not a detective. So, you know, we'll give Kyle the day off so we can give some more time to the detectives to, to solve those cold cases. But instead, we have a whole bunch of salary here protecting the elite, protecting the public servants so we can't have access to the people. And Constitutional Republic is participatory. So if we can't participate via email, phone, showing up, or even see these people here, and then you're arresting people for the First Amendment, Second Amendment, Third Amendment, trained to take our Fourth Amendment, what's the point? Just rip up the Constitution, right? We just go back to whatever other country. I, I don't think that's right. You, do, do you, I, I don't think we violate the Constitution. You, you've never rep arrested anybody for weapons? I have, of course I have. Shall not be infringed. From carrying a weapon. But shall not be infringed. And also, as I said, the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution as well as Marbury versus Madison, 1803, specifically say, and that's actually, I bet you, Marbury versus Madison, I'm willing to bet that's in your pocket constitution, will say all laws which are repugnant to the constitution, which means the gun laws, they're automatically null and void. That's in the constitution as well as Marbury versus Madison. So you don't think there should be reasonable restrictions on what the firearms? That's, but maybe. I, mean, I know what they are now. What, what's, a, what's reasonable? I think it would be reasonable for someone who has committed a murder in the past to not be allowed to purchase a firearm. Why? Or possess a firearm. Why? Because they're likely to harm others in the future. Well, so you don't believe what, when somebody's served their time for a crime? I actually have a friend who's not even a lawyer. He's gotten seven people out of jail in the last two years who were wrongfully convicted. And when the government, I mean, Hillary and Bill Clinton and the Bush family, they're still running around free, right? How many people did Hillary Clinton and Obama kill when they went into Libya? How many people did Bush and Cheney kill when they had weapons of mass destruction? They're not getting arrested. The thing is, there's nothing in, even, maybe me and you don't like that, that a murderer should be able to have a gun, right? They can't, technically. I mean, they should, but that's then you shouldn't enforce the Constitution because it says shall not be infringed. That doesn't mean, oh, well, we can do this, we can do that, we can do that. It's just very clearly. It's the most straightforward of all the amendments. Shall not be infringed. What are we going to do? Well, here's the thing. What if we need that murderer one day to, to, to pick up arms against a tyrannical government? Maybe we will. We might. Uh, and that's the... That's uh, a, tyrannical government. Yeah, remember Great Britain? We had to, uh, we had to start a, a revolution. Did he just say what I thought he said? He wants to use people to fight overseas isn't that communism <laughs> that guy is a crackpot there was a tyrannical government or the tyrannical government as i just described it right now where we have no rights but you guys pretend like you uphold our rights but i just went through half the bill of rights and we don't have them this is already a tyrannical government. I, look, I'm going to go over there, man, but I appreciate you speaking to me. Check, you out, check, out, check out the, the supremacy clause, man.